writing is about revision and second chances for everyone. It doesn't matter if you are a professional writer, if you're an academic, everybody can revise and improve their writing. Or sometimes you are just revising it because it is now being addressed to a different audience or for a different purpose. So this article written by Amelia Tate, which is in your reader and I've made here into a PDF so I can leave my comments for this class, is called From Subtweets to Sarcastic Putdowns. Online culture is giving adults a taste for bullying. Did you like my CNN newscaster voice there? So in this article from 2018, Tate opens really strong with her own experience of online bullying and why a comment from a stranger was worse from something that sh worse for her personally and sort of its emotional impact than what she felt from neo-nazis who sent her messages uh, about killing herself and as she's going through this this personal experience it's a wonderful way to open something that has so research heavy because it gives us an emotional anchor and it gives us a sort of um a place to connect with everything she's going to say further on however that is something that could definitely be strengthened because see she opens with her experience but then follows it with research that she doesn't explicitly connect back to either her ideas or her experience. There's an implicit connection there that we, the readers, can follow, and sometimes we might have to go back and reread it to catch it. But there's no explicit marker where she connects, say, her confusion with perhaps what this person, who's called Danny, uh, meant to say, or how Danny meant this to be felt and how she perceived it. There's an implicit connection here with these politicians who were apparently confused or unclear on how certain remarks were meant to be taken or what certain slang indicated. But we have no follow-up from Tate about how she relates this back to her experience or what her view is on this. We just have information. That is one of the pitfalls of a research article like this for this class, is getting lost in the information and forgetting to always return to your argument, your position on this. So my comments if I were leaving them for Tate to revise for this class are, so how does this relate back to Danny? Or what are your thoughts on how this should shape our independent viewing of responses that we receive? Now, a great strength of this article is all the different kinds of sources it uses. It uses politicians, it uses government funded websites, and it references uh, think tanks. Or, or professionals, um, but some of these sources, even though they're great, could be even stronger. So for example, um, here where it talks about a government funded website, perhaps everyone in the UK knows this, although because she has to introduce that it's government funded, uh, I would question that. Stop online abuse. Government funded lets us know that it's uh, a legitimate public website right, a legitimate government website, which is a good source. But a little more information might help us understand the, the credentials or the worth of this information. So is this referencing um, psychologists from the Board of Psychology? Is this referencing um, counselors? Is this aimed at students? Is this aimed at adults? A little more context for this sort of material would let us weigh in on how we value this. And then of course, following this up with how this relates back to her experience or her argument about online bullying would definitely help us, the reader, understand and process this information that's otherwise might feel sort of random. Now, Tate's argument jumps back and forth between U.S. sources and sources from the U.K. or United Kingdom. 
there if you're going to jump back and forth between sources from different places there should be a reason so if tate was trying to argue that the united kingdom should model its policies on policies that the u.s has already adopted then she definitely needs to include sources from the u.s and the uk to make that compare contrast argument but that doesn't seem to be what Tate's doing. And so moving back and forth between things that happen in the UK with the Labour MP and an American girl and the sort of different ways these have impacted different countries' policies about online abuse is, is a little unclear and confusing for us, the reader. If you're making an argument that is just about something in, say, a specific country or even a specific region, your sources should, by and large, pertain to that. Because, again, this is about supporting your argument. It's not just about information. In the wrap-up, Tate gets back to some of her arguments, some of her ideas, where she's saying, hey, we should, you know, perhaps take this approach and this approach and sort of balance these things together when we're thinking about how we respond to online comments and how we should uh, create policies about this. That's great, but that should be in every single paragraph. Every paragraph should come back to what Tate is trying to show, what Tate's trying to prove, not just include a bunch of sources that feel a little disconnected for us, the reader. So these are my comments. I look forward to reading your comments uh, in our discussion boards and assignments.